walls and institutions that they are governed by hundreds of years. I don't know that they, they were governed by hundreds of years later after their foundation any more than man can wear the same clothes as an adult that he wore as a child. And we are honored right now to be in the presence of Stephen Raspa, one of uh, Burning Man's uh, great organizers and a uh, man who reaches out across uh, regions and across cultures. Uh, the first man I ever met at Burning Man. Um, standing here. Uh, uh, to see you and it's great to be here tonight uh, what an incredible outburst of joy and positive potential human consciousness in a, a year it's amazing to be here with so many positive people you know I mean it's 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 a special night how has the evolution theme played out you've been here all week you're engaged with the community in a very real and deep way there's been a lot more exchange of ideas here, more workshops, talks, uh, people connecting, really talking to one another. And I think that the theme has worked to really stir people in, in a direction in which they think about, okay, so we have this amazing experience. Well, what are we going to do with it? So. I think as a theme, it's been very successful. How do you convey what's happening here to people who would like to be here? People who are missing the burn this year, tuned in to BurningMan.com. It's a challenge, really. It's, there's, it's not something that can be expressed in words. Um, I suppose I would say go back to the most, the most joyful moment in your childhood and consider what it means to you as an adult and just be with that moment there are no limits here no one is telling you what you cannot do they're only showing you what you can do because of what they are doing in terms of being and doing what they love and what brings them joy and that's the beauty of the whole experience really that it's that simple and that complex Everyone talks about bringing the values of Burning Man out into the uh, out into the default world. Have you seen ways that people do that? Are there people uh, who can participate tonight and participate tomorrow morning by uh, doing something in order to uh, make, make what's happening tonight in Black Rock City part of their lives and, and part of the lives of people around them? It's happening every day. It's happening through Burners Without Borders, it's happening through the Black Rock Arts Foundation, it's happening through Black Rock Solar, through the regional network, um, and through many, many, many unofficial way in which we don't even try to describe it. Uh, I met with someone today in Guatemala who wants to create a, a self-sustainable, uh, uh, intentional community. I met with someone else from Croatia who was moved by this experience of coming out here for four years and said, well, you know, uh, I think that there's a, there's somehow so somehow a way to translate this experience to bring it to uh, Croatia. Uh, throughout the world, this has really become a, a global event, a conference of the human imagination. And, well, it's, again, it's that simple and that complex. And there's no describing it uh, so much as living it. Uh, I wanted to I wanted to elaborate on something you said about no one showing you what you can do. They're only showing you what you can do. They're also giving you the the muse and the ability to use your imagination and take the creative process to a place where you can imagine things that have never been imagined before. And I was discussing this with the temple guys the other day that the flame, the, the rotating flame, the way it goes up, the spiraling flame, it's never been done before. They invented this entire process just for this temple. And I just, I think that's a wonderful and beautiful thing about this place. That's awesome. Well, I think that's an interesting uh, point of reference because inadvertently there have been these spiraling fire vortex that have come out of uh, the temple burn or the man burn on various occasions and the Native American Indians have recognized them as ancestors and somehow through mm, cleverness, imagination, we have figured out how to recreate that experience. It raises interesting questions. I mean, is that the real thing or is it our imagination mm, replicating something that is sincere? I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, I think we're figuring out how to live as conscious human beings, imaginative people in a world in which 
let's face it, our economic systems have not been particularly fulfilling. Uh, and here we have something that, you know, it, you can be dismissive of this experience. You can say it's a big party and woohoo and what does it matter? But the truth is, there's something profound and meaningful, um, equally challenging and silly and beautiful and joyful that happens here. And it inspires people. In fact, as a part of the Burning Man organization, it's not about any specific uh, form of expression. It's about being the good caretaker of the human imagination as it unfolds. There's no controlling this experience. It's, it's as profound as it is joyful, ridiculous, playful, uh, uh, inventive. Uh, and there are some of the most brilliant minds here some of the most amazing artists and expressive human beings and people that really feel deeply what it means to be a human being on this planet at a time in which we're challenged. Challenged with limited resources, challenged with, well, what do we do uh, when our usual sense of how we relate to one another, which is, in economic terms, is failing or mm, colliding with some antiquated notion of what it means to be a conscious person in this world. And here we are now, and it's, yeah, all I want to say is, it's easy, very, very easy to dismiss what's happening here, but it's also uh, impossible to dismiss what is happening here.